I think for me, it most definitely is because one, um, when we're, I'm, I'm also a writer of fiction. I write fiction films as well. And I'm pretty much sure if I created a character that is half the woman that Stella is, everyone would say, this is not an African woman. You know, she's too radical. She's too this, she's too that. And one of the reasons now that I love do documentaries is because you can document a living person that's as bold and courageous as Stella, and you won't have... Um, partners or executive producers telling you, can you make her more African? Because I don't have to make Stella anything. She is there um, living and breathing um, um, as she is. And I didn't create her, I'm just documenting her. Our company, Shajika, for instance, is a company that wants to tell decolonized stories, um, exclusively almost, you know, stories that give us back our power and, and show us in, in positions of power. And and power doesn't doesn't necessarily mean you know um, the power that we see. I mean, capitalist power. For me, Stella is a person of power because even when she is oppressed, she fights back, and it doesn't have to be violent. She goes on the streets. She's you know taken into custody. She's uh, humiliated. She takes clothes off and and puts herself in a very vulnerable position. But in the in the same breath, she gives herself power and says, "I." I choose. I choose how you see me. I choose what I show. I choose what I say. I choose how I I speak to you and how I relate with you. Yeah. There's a level of re-education. So as much as Black bodies, women's bodies, um, queer bodies have been violently treated, um, mm -hmm. the way how Stella has portrayed herself and, and many, many activists and feminists before and are still to come, is just to prove the level of, of violence that people live through. 